Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look at a Serco Aluminum Universal Camper Ladder on a 2020 Dutchman Coleman Lantern Light Travel Trailer. Having a camper generally comes with a decent amount of maintenance attached to it and some of that maintenance happens to be up on the roof, whether it be for AC units or just general you know, yearly cleaning of it and getting some of that mold off. And to be able to, to have a ladder attached to it, which doesn't come factory, is really nice because you can step up on your bumper and be up on your roof and know that it's sure-footed and it's not going to fall over as you try to get back down. So as you can see, our customer has two AC units installed. So with having to check those on an annual basis or if you're troubleshooting any issues, you now have quick access to get up there. Also for cleaning any mold or mildew buildup, any leaves that might be caught in your awning system, this is gonna be great for you. So this ladder is a universal ladder, meaning it can be used on a bunch of different campers and it even has hinges attached for ones that are curved. It can be used on curved roofs or flat tops, but as we can see with this one, this is a straight up and down and a slight curve. So we did have to cut to adjust to that rooftop, but it wasn't too hard to do. All your hardware and brackets are included and it goes pretty simple once you really measure it out. And that's the trick of this, is just making sure everything's lined up before starting the install. So I can walk you through that right now. The first step you're gonna to wanna to do is grab your stud finder. You're gonna to wanna to obviously see where this is gonna mount up. And that way you're actually hitting something that's solid. There we go. And so the ladder being 12 inches, we're gonna scan across and try to find it. Double, triple check both sides of the wall to make sure that you know for sure that you have a stud there. So what I've done just for some visual cues for myself is I used painter's tape and I wrapped that up. And that way I have a good line of where this actually needs to sit. So we do have a slightly curved roof it's minimal, but we will need to trim this in order for it to sit flush. So what I'm going to try to do here is I know that this needs to sit flush. I want to take this hardware out and actually I'm going to slide it to where it's sitting flush. And that way I know how much to cut off. Now, something else I've done is I just took some Gorilla Tape and put the supports here. And that way it's sitting at roughly the proper angle. It's not spot on. But my main goal is to mount up top and work my way down and following that tape line should really help. So seeing the difference here, it's pretty easy to tell how much of a gap difference there is. Now, as far as it contouring uh, to the actual way of the, the roof itself, these feet are, they kind of swivel. Um, so that is nice, but we do need to chop off a section here. And to figure that out, I have my ladder nice and aligned on this backside. So I know it's sitting at a good angle. And what I'm gonna do is measure this gap, which puts us right at about almost I, absolutely an inch spot on. So what I'll do is I'll cut an inch off here and that should match the shape to where this will sit flush. So obviously this depends on camper to camper, but this is kind of where we're looking at. I'm gonna cut this off, but also we need these holes aligned the same way and that way they mount into the bracket the same way as the other rail. So further up, I've marked both sides to where the alignment will be. And we can actually use this to mark where it needs to be after. But for now, I'm gonna cut my inch off. I'm using an angle grinder. You could probably get away using a hacksaw. Um, if you need to put it in a vise, just be careful. The tubing itself can bend. Next, you can see it's a little, not the cleanest cut on my end. So I'm gonna just file this down and get all these burrs off. And then we'll drill some holes. So I have this cut off and I filed it down. It doesn't have to be perfect because you are putting that bracket, but try to make it as flat as possible. So now we're going to need to drill the hole to replace the one that we cut off. And since it does have to be aligned, it's really gonna help to use the factory edge here and align it 
and that way you can match the hole with the mark that you've made and just put a little notch and that way you can drill straight through and know that it's aligned properly. <laughs> now that I have my mark, I can drill through. <laughs> Now I'm going to double check my alignment on this end so we know that it's coming through straight. Make this drill nice and level and we should be ready to go. So now I've set it back up here. You can put the feet back on but you can see that the bars are sitting nice and level and the rest of the ladder is hanging parallel with the side of the trailer. So we should be ready to mount our feet onto here and then we can work our way down. So I've taped my support arms on here and that way I can kind of tell the distance of where it's gonna be from the actual camper. So with that, I can mount my brackets. I'm just gonna make some quick marks here on the outside of them. And I don't have these pinned in and that way once I have my marks, I can put my brackets and zip those into place. So lining up my holes, make a mark up front make a mark out back all right with my marks made around the bracket i'm going to put one of the screws in not all the way i'm really just trying to make my marks because i'll be peeling this tape off now that i have marks i can actually zing these in and we're going to repeat that same process on the other side i do recommend putting your ladder back up and just mocking it up make sure that everything is lined properly the less holes you have to drill, the better. Hopefully it's a one and done. Okay. Now a quick outside check of each brackets here puts us right at one foot on the nose. And that's way you know that you've mounted it properly as far as spacing goes. Obviously you're gonna also wanna make sure that this is aligned properly going this way. So now that we have that in place, let's go ahead and we can mount those bars in with our supplied hardware. So we have our top portion mounted up. This is loosely installed and, and really what we're gonna be needing to do is cutting some of these rungs off to mate the bottom hooked end and that way we can actually mount it all together. So while I have this here, I'm gonna grab my other piece, see where it sits at and then we're gonna make some marks and cut that. So as you can see with our universal kit, it's like way too long. So what we'll need to do is we're gonna be mounting this above our battery box, right above that light there. And so trying to find a good spot where the rungs are lined up, well, looks to be that we're gonna make our cut and join them here. Now you do have these hinged pieces. Um, you're gonna to want to use those and that's gonna couple these up. Um, they also suggest putting these, you know, close to the center as possible, but I do believe this is gonna put us right where we need to be, and plus we'll be able to space out our support, support arms later. So let's go ahead, we'll mark this section, and then we're gonna to need to figure out how much we need to cut out with this portion, and then we'll button it all up together. Okay, so having our rungs nice and lined up, we know that our steps are gonna stay cohesive, there's not gonna be any odd gaps. So to join these, you have these hinges here, and these are gonna couple it. So what we'll need to do is account for that by marking one spot here and one spot there. And that's gonna be the way that it fits in. So let's see, we're gonna to try to put this in the center. So this would feed into this pipe. Let's go ahead and make our mark. We're now gonna take that, match that mark on the other side, and that should fit well. Now, go ahead and you can repeat that same process on the other side. Now that I have everything marked off, I'm gonna go back and put this in the vise and take my angle grinder to it, and cut it down. So now that I have our ends cut, I've taken a file and rounded those out and that way we can slip in our hinges. So I'm gonna be putting them this way. Uh, some other styles, since this is universal, you need to actually have them tilt in, but for this one, it's just a straight shot down. So I'm gonna put them that way so that it adds a little structural rigidity. And just put these in here and it should go together. 
Okay, so now that we have our structure of our ladder made, we're gonna go ahead and attach it up there. And from that point, we can see where it's gonna mount at the bottom. And then we can also put the spacing of our support arms in. Now, all of this, you're not gonna to wanna to tighten it all down yet because we are gonna to have to drill holes for those support arms. So let's go ahead and we'll get this mocked up, see where it looks. So now that I have it loosely attached, you're gonna to wanna to make sure these are pushed up all the way and haven't dropped, but we're about ready to mount our bottom. So what I'm gonna do is take my level and place it on the side. And that way I know it's looking good straight up and down. So with my holes marked, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna drill just a little bit in and then I will go back and pull my tape line. But putting this will hold the bracket in place. Now I'm gonna do the other side of my bottom bracket, but I wanna make sure that I do have it level. It looks pretty good. So I'll go ahead and mark my spots. So now that I have my top and bottom bracket mounted up together, it's all starting to come together. Now these hinges here, since they are just coupling, we're actually gonna be drilling through these and running hardware through there. So go ahead and drill those out, large enough to fit your machine screw through. And I'm gonna go, I would say, I'll mark off half an inch or so, and that should put us at a good point. So with my holes marked where I'm gonna drill, I'm gonna go ahead and run a small pilot bit hole first. So now I'm gonna go back with my larger size bit and that's gonna allow me to run the hardware through. So follow that same hole through. So now we'll go back with our hardware and go and make sure that the actual screw head is facing out. And that way it's less for you to get your feet or anything caught on as you're going up. And go back with your nut and go ahead and finger tight that down. So now that we have the top and bottom mounted up, our next step is gonna to be to take these support arms and find a good spot to where they're spaced out evenly enough to hold the force. So I'm thinking underneath this rung here and underneath this rung here should be a good space and give us a good support. So let's go ahead and test fit one of them in. Make sure it's nice and level. And once we find out, we'll take the level to it. We can mark our spots here where we're gonna drill. We're also gonna have to drill in the dead center of this. So using this little point here, that's gonna tell us where the hole is. And we're gonna have to drill through here to run the screw in. So just like before, we're gonna go ahead and mark our holes and then we'll take our screws and mount that up. Now also while we have this here, you're gonna see the point here. Let's find the middle ground between those cause we will be drilling. So it should line up here and find the dead center. So now I'm going to put a small pilot hole here for our bracket. Now it's, you wanna be very careful not to go too far because you do have this plastic inside here. You don't wanna to get to those threads, but pilot hole should center up in there. Then I'll go back with a larger one and that way it'll fit my hardware. Now we can take our Phillips head screwdriver, feed that in, and you should have it start to tighten down. Now we're gonna go ahead and repeat the same process on the next three. So now really all that's left to do is I'm gonna go back and make sure that all my hardware with a nut on it is tightened, all my brackets, and just make sure everything's taut before hopping on it and make sure those metal shavings are blown off, but should be ready to rock. So now with all of our hardware tightened up, we're ready to use this thing. Not bad. 
Now this last step that I'm gonna do is optional, but I highly recommend it. And that's gonna be going back where we've mounted our brackets and screws. And we're gonna put non-sag on the side here. And what that's gonna do is create a nice seal and that way water's not gonna get in. Now as far as the roof brackets, I highly recommend a self-leveler, which we also have here at E-Trailer. And that's just gonna give you that added peace of mind knowing that water's not gonna be seeping in to your freshly installed ladder area. So, just like a caulk gun, you're gonna run it over the bead of it and then also cover your screws as well. And that was a look at the Serco Universal Aluminum Camper Ladder on a 2020 Dutchman Coleman Lantern Light Travel Trailer. Thanks for watching.